I've been through, but I've made it. And cut, print it. Check the gate. Let's take five. No design in this world is going to be satisfactory to somebody unless it works well. Each restaurant has got its own character. Each shop has got its own character. But there is a, a thread that connects them all together. You're designing for people to use things. If they're not successful, you fail as a designer and as a businessman. I would never have anything except the classic green card, which has undoubtedly changed the world. American Express is welcomed at all Conrad establishments and around the world. Or a meal in your hand, our steak and mushroom will feed a brass band with spicy chicken, ham, and cheese that gives the slice can feed Hercules. So, wherever you are, whatever you do, let the Ginsters best take your hunger away. We want to be able to live a little. I want to be able to live a lot. I want to be able to go out once in a while. I want to be able to be nice. I want to be able to enjoy the garden. I want to be able to stuff the garden, hire a big yacht and disappear around the world. More and more women are taking control of their future with a flexible pension from Prudential. We want to be together. Whatever your plans for later life, you'll want a new Prudential pension. What are you doing, sitting there? Outside a wonderful world. Tomorrow in the Mirror, play new half a million pound Bono Bingo. And also read Russell Grant's Daily Stars. House! You'll be surprised when you look in the mirror. You may be looking for a car that's small and practical. But you still want a car that feels luxurious. Well, now you've found it. Because while the Clio is certainly small, it's perfectly formed. Go. The Renault Clio. You probably could try and get the ice off your uh, windscreen with a £10 note. An American Express card is easier. To apply for the card, simply pick up this leaflet. Tomorrow at 8 on Carlton. Lights up. Places, everyone. Um. Yeah, after the break, I want to get set up for the medium, but you got to get that light fixed first. No, no problem. We just sort it out. Okay. Uh, hurry. It's all right. It's all right. Hurry. It's okay. Uh. Buy a used car from Network Q, and you'll be saying thank you. Because at Network Q, every used car gets 114 checks, just like a new car. Thank you. Network Q, treating used cars like new. Knight takes Rook. Check. Looks like the game's over for Nigel Short. Still, a quick pause for refreshment. What's this? Oh, look at these horrible black marks. We'll soon get rid of them. Now that's better. Sparkling. Amazing. Short's cleaned up. And in half the time... Looking for help buying a home? 
then this free TSB video called The Home Buyer's Guide could be the key to your dream home. It makes understanding the whole process from making an offer to moving in child's play. It's helpful and enlightening. No matter what place takes your fancy, ring 0345 123 900 for your free video. Because we want you to say yes. Don't worry, Colin, it'll be there. DHL? No problem, sir. Can do. At DHL, we never forget that whenever we deliver your package, we are delivering something more important. Your promise. Have a break. Have a kick here. Great British bingo. There's £26,000 to be won. And play new Sunstrip to pick up a Great British Mini. Get your new bingo card free inside tomorrow's 20p Sun. How to get ahead in business. Remember, it's a jungle out there. And life in the fast lane is better chauffeur driven. Never follow the herd. It is essential for the entrepreneur to have room to think. And, of course, to unwind. Prudent use of leisure time is a vital business attribute. Allow yourself to relax. Switch off. Because in business, you need a fresh mind to make those tough decisions. Scholars, please. The key to success is a good night's sleep to recharge those batteries and rise fighting fit and ready to do battle. So there you have it. Door-to-door -door limo, first-class sleeper seat, personal TV, Raymond Blanc cuisine, all for no more than your ordinary business class ticket. I'm happy. Virgin upper class. Who said you can't mix business with pleasure? For this shot here, right? Yeah, but Robert, are you sure it's going to match? Yeah, right? it'll work. Don't worry. Just get moving. And cut. That's good. The Voxel Astra van. Everything you like in an Astra, including all-round deadlocking. So it's safe to say, whichever way you look at it, it's the business. I think the advantages of a digital mobile phone would be? Increased security, one would hope. Any chance of a lift, mate? Vodafone Digital, mobile phone network that minds your own business. right in the middle of the action. The Cinema Sound with Dolby Pro Logic from Hitachi. For me, the best hair color is a color with superb shine and a color that lasts. Now I found it. Casting by L'Oreal, the new tone-on-tone -tone shampoo in colorant. Casting, just twist and apply, so easy to use. Casting, so gentle with no ammonia. Casting from L'Oreal, the new deep shine color that lasts. Casting makes my natural hair color more beautiful than ever. And it lasts. Casting, the new deep shine colorant from L'Oreal. <laughs> I did that. It was nice of her to do that. I didn't know they did that. I'm glad 
but they don't do that. At Thompson, we spend 52 weeks a year making your two weeks perfect. Enter the new Daily Mail competition and you could win a whole new dimension in British holidays. Up to £100,000 worth of one-week holidays must be won at the new centre parks in Longleaf. With the Daily Mail, you could lose yourself in a subtropical paradise woven into the stately Wiltshire countryside. Explore the whole range of activities that Centre Parks Longleat will offer, from relaxing beneath the palms to windsurfing, tennis and badminton. 100 family holidays the weather can't spoil must be won, starting tomorrow only in the Daily Mail. Some kind of day begins, and it won't be long to drink it in. Consider using a digital mobile phone to keep in touch. Oh, no. I never knows he's listening in. Vodafone Digital, a mobile phone network for one's ears only. And action. Just let it. 273 take four, tail slate. That's a wrap, everybody. Thank you for a great day. ITV and Diet Coke presented movie premiere. An action packed next Saturday on ITV. Everybody stop what you're doing, please. Eddie Murphy's a cop with an attitude. I'm going deep, 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 deep undercover. Beverly Hills Cop 2 at 6.30. At 8.15, the chase is on for Sun Hill's finest in The Bill. And at 9... Mayday, mayday. Bruce Willis in the action classic... Die Hard. Welcome to the party, pal! Next Saturday. Next, ITN News. Have you looked in the mirror recently? Starting tomorrow, play new Bono Bingo in the mirror and win a share of an amazing half a million pounds. Yes, half a million pounds. And with Russell Grant now writing your daily stars, he'll tell you if you're going to be lucky. Oh! Surprised? You'll be surprised when you look in the mirror. Uh, uh. See, the powers that be can argue about Europe till they're blue in the face, but British business is just going to have to get on with it. And we're not just talking about exporting here. There are guidelines some countries have been working within for years that we're all going to have to accommodate overnight. Which is why we spent two years developing this thing called Faris. My name. It couldn't be simpler. His name. The computer program asks you questions about your business. Detailed questions. Then tells you the rules and regulations that affect it. Works for any size of business. It's constantly updated. I feel like we're going on a bit, but this is sort of a crusade for us. I mean, it's so rare for us to have any sort of advantage in Europe. Frank doesn't have one of these yet. Aye. Jose, ven a comer. I remember the days in all El Paso. Someday, the whole family would be there. And Pedro, too. Grandma, she start with the grace. Grandpa, she start with the bean dip. Then we get the tacos and fill them with beef and chicken and salad and cheese and things. And if you brave men like Uncle Carlos, jalapeño pepper is too hot for me. But Pedro, he never learned. Old El Paso, the home of fine Mexican food. Victoria Wood, live at the Royal Albert Hall in her acclaimed new show. It's not the nicest cafe I've ever been in. It's got this huge man behind the counter. There's no menu. You just have to look at his vest and guess. 
Wood. Victoria Wood, now extended for a record-breaking second week from the 21st of September. Phone the Royal Albert Hall box office. When travelling across the Atlantic, the comfort of first class makes all the difference. Continental Airlines Business First gives you an electronic sleeper seat with all the extra space and comfort of first class. But for a business class fare, that is the difference. For hair that feels great every time, Finesse Shampoo and Finesse Conditioner together give your hair a touch of finesse. Tomorrow in the Mirror, play new half a million pound Bono Bingo. And also read Russell Grant's Daily Stars. House! You'll be surprised when you look in the mirror. How has one British company won business in 45 countries around the world? In places as far afield as Argentina and Thailand. By looking after millions of customers in places as far afield as Inverness and Penzance. Indeed. Last year alone, this company received thousands of unsolicited messages of thanks from customers. Proof that for at least one company, world class begins at home. British Gas, a world class energy company. Tootsie out of Africa and now The Firm. Sidney Pollock, a Hollywood master filmmaker. Bitch! I mean, Your Honor, that's a hell of a shot. I really, I really did not want to do this. Uh, for a long time, and the more the book sold, the more I was uh, frightened. That's Sidney Pollock on the South Bank Show. In 15 minutes at 11.25, Julian Clary takes his own inimitable look at the best of the Edinburgh Festival. That's after the news and weather at 11.25. <laughs> You're watching London Weekend Television, part of the ITV network. <laughs> Good evening. The news from ITN. Tonight's headlines. Union leaders warn that row over labour links is a dream for the Tories. Arafat seeks Arab support for peace as Israel predicts an early signing. And the Algerian who smashed Steve Cram's mile record. Trade union leaders were told tonight they could be blamed for wrecking Labour's chances of winning the next election. Officials from seven major unions were accused of forming a clandestine shadow cabinet to foster their opposition to plans by the Labour leader John Smith for voting reforms. On the eve of the TUC conference in Brighton, the president of the engineering union said their talks had been a dream for the Tories. The TUC leaders were all smiles for the cameras today as the row over Labour's links with the unions intensified. It all centred on last night's meeting of seven key trade unions opposed to aspects of John Smith's plans to reduce union power. Today, the Engineering and Electrical Union called it a clandestine shadow cabinet aimed at hurting Labour. If their stated intention is to destroy John Smith's plan uh, for a democratic Labour party, uh, they will destroy Labour's hope of future government. But other trade unions at that meeting dismissed claims they were trying to damage the party. Not at all. Absolute nonsense. What about a shadow, a clandestine shadow cabinet? Was it that? Well, that doesn't deserve an answer, does it? I don't think it's helpful to continue this discussion through the course of the week, and I'm not going to do so. The TUC starts in earnest tomorrow, although trade union leaders hope the issue of one member, one vote will no longer capture media attention. It will. The Labour leader speaks here on Tuesday. Stephen Cape, ITN, in Brighton. The Prime Minister has issued a defiant warning to Conservative right-wingers that he won't be hounded out of office. It comes amid threats of a challenge to his leadership later this year if the government's performance fails to improve. In a new book by Penny Juner, John Major declares that he'll only resign when people least expect it and on my own terms. The leader of the Palestine Liberation Organization, Yasser Arafat, appears to have suffered a setback tonight in his campaign for wider Arab support for his peace deal with Israel. He met Syria's President Assad, who then refused publicly to back the plan. The President said the Palestinians had to decide for themselves what to do. Israeli cabinet ministers said earlier they hoped the peace accord could be signed a week tomorrow. Palestinian sources say that may be too soon. Israel is preparing itself for its leap into the political unknown. Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin, Foreign Minister Shimon Peres, the Chief of Staff, 
all of them discussing at today's cabinet meeting the details and timing of the deal with the PLO. They seem confident there are no substantive problems. We've waited a hundred years for this accord, said one. We can wait a few days longer. Whatever the delays, the key breakthrough has already been achieved. The declaration of principle, principles is already signed and ready and as an independent document. It is not linked to anything else. All eyes in the region are now on Yasser Arafat, who is in Damascus meeting President Assad to persuade him to back the plan for self-rule in Gaza and Jericho. It is a belated effort to coordinate their positions. Despite hostility from several Palestinian factions who have vowed to fight on, it seems likely that Arafat will win sufficient Arab backing for the deal. The political temperature within Israel may rise sharply over the next week. On Tuesday in Jerusalem, a huge opposition rally is planned. Both communities, Palestinian and Jewish, find themselves deeply divided. There is simmering discontent on all sides, but both the Israelis and the PLO have said there is no turning back. The Israelis are hopeful this historic agreement can be signed in the White House in just over one week's time. Robert Moore, ITN, Jerusalem. There's been more heavy fighting around the British Army base at Vitez in central Bosnia. A mortar shell landed close to the base, injuring a local woman. Two British officers in a house nearby were unhurt. Sunday mass in Vitez held outside because snipers control the path to the church. But as the service began, so too did a new Muslim offensive. Heavy shelling was coming from just outside the town as a small Croat enclave came under attack. Anxious eyes looked to the hills on the other side of the British base here. One large mortar landed in the backyard of a house where two British officers were sleeping. The house is just 20 yards from the base. It was the narrowest of escapes. There was a very large explosion. All the glass came in in the windows here. And uh, when we went outside, there was a lady who was lying down there down there badly injured but there's little the british can do except sweep up and protest to local commanders it is very frustrating um obviously sitting here uh, but it is difficult uh, when you're sitting on a front line uh, not to avoid these things this is the closest the shell has come to landing actually inside the british base and the army here is not convinced by local claims that it wasn't the intended target jim buchanan itn vitez in the past hour, United Nations helicopters firing anti-tank missiles have attacked strongholds of the Somali warlord General Ideed, less than 24 hours after his supporters were blamed for murdering seven UN peacekeepers. The Nigerian troops were shot dead by militia men at an Italian checkpoint in Mogadishu. An American diplomat was wounded when he apparently stumbled into the ambush. After secret talks, Britain has given a series of written assurances to Libya to try to bring the two men accused of the Lockerbie bombing to trial in Scotland. This comes five years after Pan Am Flight 103 crashed, killing 259 people. The missing 13-year-old Nicola Rogers is believed to have taken clothes in her rucksack when she disappeared three days ago. Police are also checking unconfirmed reports that she's been seen in Crewe or Liverpool. Consumer groups have condemned the government for allowing frozen beef up to six years old to be sold in Britain. The meat, part of the so-called European beef mountain, is being bought by wholesalers. Tonight, the government dismissed fears over safety and insisted it was fit to eat. The beef at issue has recently been kept for up to six years. Now there's concern that some frozen beef may predate the new regulations introduced in 1989 on the cow disease BSE. One biologist says even healthy beef deteriorates and the whole lot should be destroyed. During the storage, over the years, the various tissues in the beef break down and you get new chemicals being formed. So it is potentially dangerous and certainly unpleasant. Consumer groups argue that at the very least the public should be told when they're buying old meat. The real point about this is they try to get it onto the market without anybody knowing. And frankly, I wouldn't like, and I'm sure the majority of us would not like to purchase six-year-old beef. But if it is safe, as they claim, then why not just label it so that it, all of us can make our own informed choice? But the meat industry say the beef stored in boxes and warehouses is perfectly healthy. This beef, when it went in, was supervised by veterinary surgeons. It went into stores where it was blast frozen and it was controlled all the time it was in there to make absolutely sure 
that there were no temperature fluctuations. It's absolutely safe. The government says there's no possibility of BSE affected beef having been stored and that consumers have nothing to fear. Now athletics, Steve Cram's world record for the mile has been broken after eight years. The Algerian Noradin Mosselli took nearly two seconds off Cram's time at a meeting in Italy. Morselli will be racing in Britain on Friday in the Grand Prix Finals at Crystal Palace. And in the rowing, Britain's Olympic champions in the coxed pairs won another gold medal today at the World Championships in the Czech Republic. The Searle brothers, Jonathan and Greg, coxed by Gary Herbert, had a bad start but surged forward towards the end of the race. And that's all from the weekend news team here at ITN. Good night. <laughs>